of the United States Navy is to support fundamental national policies and interests throughout the world by controlling the seven seas, its surfaces, its depths below, and the air above. The operating forces which directly carry out this mission require a vast network of shore facilities, both in the United States and overseas. Naval shipyards, air stations, submarine bases, ammunition depots, supply depots, hospitals, training stations, and guided missile facilities, to name only a few. The planning, the design, the construction, and maintenance of these shore facilities are the general responsibility of the Bureau of Yards and Docks, and are carried out by officers of the Civil Engineer Corps, commonly called the CEC a core of highly qualified graduate engineers who have devoted their lives to provide civil engineering services to our fleets around the globe. Although its name, Civil Engineer Corps, implies the Corps is composed only of civil engineers, its ranks include graduates in electrical, mechanical, architectural, industrial, and mining engineering. Proud of its history and achievements, the Civil Engineer Corps each year recruits energetic young engineers from civilian life to help carry on the Corps' traditions. All candidates being considered for the CEC are required to meet high standards of professional ability and personal integrity. Once selected as a candidate for the Corps, engineers not commissioned through the NROTC program or Reserve Officer Candidate Program, report to Newport, Rhode Island to attend OCS, Officer Candidate School. Here they are given an extensive 16-week course of instruction designed to qualify them for a commission in the United States Naval Reserve. Upon graduation from OCS, the young CEC officers report to the Naval Construction Battalion Center, Port Wyneme, California, for a two-month course designed to acquaint them with the specialized administrative and management techniques necessary to equip them for the duties they will be assigned during the remainder of their obligated service. Completing this course, Officers are assigned to various shore establishments in the United States and overseas. Assignments being based on each officer's individual background, experience, and preference, as well as the needs of the Navy. However, no matter where assigned, officers of the Civil Engineer Corps will find the work varied, and a challenge to any engineer worthy of the name. So that you may have a better idea of how the United States Navy uses to best advantage the knowledge young graduate engineers have absorbed in college, let's take a look at the types of assignments CEC officers are engaged in. The most common of these assignments is that of public works officer at one of the Navy's shore establishments. The shore establishment you see is a typical small naval installation where a lieutenant junior grade of the CEC is assigned as public works officer. This officer holds such a billet at this activity. Having graduated from a Northeastern Engineering School where he majored in civil engineering, he received his commission at OCS. As public works officer of this activity, which has a plant account value of $20 million, he is responsible for the three major fields of public works, maintenance, transportation, and public utilities. In regard to maintenance, 
He is responsible for supervising all maintenance, repair, and improvement of all buildings, structures, and grounds on this station, as well as refuse collection, sewerage, and sewage treatment. In the field of utilities, this officer is responsible for the supervision of maintenance and operation of all utility systems, including electrical, telephone, heating, and water systems. Concerning transportation, he is responsible for the maintenance and operation of the automotive, construction, and weight handling equipment, ranging from 30 ordinary passenger vehicles up to large industrial cranes. The maintenance and management of Navy housing is his responsibility too. At this station, the public works officer is involved with some 20 homes. At other installations, public works officers may be involved with as many as three or 4,000 homes, good-sized cities in themselves. Although only a junior officer, this young graduate engineer is carrying all the responsibilities of a city engineer or manager of a small community, with an annual expenditure of close to a million dollars for maintenance and operations. To help carry out these responsibilities, the public works officer has a competent staff of designers, surveyors, inspectors, as well as skilled and unskilled labor. Another type of public works duty a young CEC officer will encounter is at a large naval installation, such as an air station or shipyard. Usually, he'll be working for a senior public works officer in an operational or staff capacity. A public works department, like the one to which these CEC officers are assigned, may consist of a staff of a thousand or more civilian workers. This young officer, a graduate industrial engineer from a Midwestern university, conducts engineering studies and develops preliminary plans and estimates for building projects. Some, like this lieutenant commander and this lieutenant, design building alterations and improvements. While still others, such as this lieutenant and this ensign, provide consulting services to maintenance crews. Proficiency in engineering and the ability to supervise workers is only a part of a CEC officer's duties. He must be, in addition, an expert in administration, labor relations, management practices, and finance. As a public works officer or a member of the staff of a public works department or public works center, a CEC officer gets involved in many things. The second type of duty a young officer may be assigned is to a district public works office located in each naval district or to an area public works office. Each district or area public works office is responsible for rendering technical engineering assistance and supervising all new construction at naval activities within its jurisdiction. This ensign is typical of the officers assigned to a district or area public works office as an assistant to the senior CEC officer. Holding a master's degree in engineering from a southern university, his job is to coordinate construction projects at certain bases within his naval district. He is presently responsible for coordinating $10 million worth of construction covering seven states. Once Congress has appropriated funds for a project, he and others on the district public works staff are given full responsibility for its design, preparation of specifications, advertisement for bids, execution of the contract, and administration and inspection of the construction contract until its satisfactory completion and acceptance. 
Administration and inspection of the actual construction is assigned to CEC resident officers and assistant resident officers like this lieutenant, a recent graduate engineer of a Western college. Working out of the district public works office, this assistant resident officer's job is to supervise construction on the site for a multi-million dollar hospital at Norfolk, Virginia. Although he works directly under this senior resident officer, a commander in the Civil Engineer Corps, he must be qualified to act independently. In general, he runs his own show to ensure the money appropriated for the project is utilized properly by the contractor in the best interests of the Navy. Outside the continental limits of the United States, a good portion of the Navy's construction work at overseas bases is also performed under CEC supervision by commercial contractors. The remainder is accomplished by the Seabees, the Navy's military construction organization, which gained widespread fame in building hundreds of overseas bases for our fighting men during World War II and the Korean conflict. Several battalions of Seabees, for example, are presently engaged in major construction projects, such as downrange facilities for intercontinental ballistic missiles, the construction of naval air stations in the Pacific, as well as permanent bases at the North and South Poles. Since a CEC officer is in command of the CBs, the third type of duty a civil engineer may be assigned is to a construction battalion. This officer, a NROTC graduate from a Midwestern university, is assigned to one of these battalions. In his job as project officer, he is gaining valuable experience in the actual direction and supervision of men on field construction. On this assignment, he has taken on engineering responsibilities that never would have been offered to a man his age in civilian life. He organized the personnel, assembled the material and equipment, and carried out a variety of construction projects. With the whole world as the Corps' province, CBs can be found constructing airfields, piers, breakwaters, roads, and all types of structures and utility systems. CEC officers only a few months out of college find assignments to a construction battalion give them valuable construction experience while they fulfill their military obligations. Since many of the requests at naval overseas bases for additional construction are made by fleet commanders with headquarters located thousands of miles away, CEC officers are assigned to the staff of each fleet commander to ensure proper engineering consideration is given to the many problems that arise in planning. This engineer, three years removed from the campus of an Eastern college, has such an assignment on a fleet commander's staff. Staff duty like his constitutes the fourth type of duty offered by the Corps. He is one of a staff of consultants on matters relating to public works and overseas activities within his command's jurisdiction, an area of thousands of square miles. He has just returned from a routine staff inspection trip and is briefing the others on the CEC aspects of mobilization planning. CEC 
CBC officers can also be found on staff assignments at their headquarters, the Bureau of Yards and Docks, or at various other bureaus in Washington, D.C. Regardless of the type of duty, the experience and training offered by the Corps to young engineers constitutes a professional education that money cannot buy. And speaking of education, the United States Navy offers members of the Corps who intend to make the service a career the opportunity to take postgraduate work at various universities and colleges throughout the country. Remaining on active duty, these officers receive full pay and allowances while taking advanced courses leading to a master's degree in science in such fields as soil mechanics. Structural engineering, advanced electrical and mechanical engineering, and engineering management. Many career officers of the Corps find that they are called upon to address leading engineering societies, since the CEC is accorded the highest possible professional standing. While still in service, many become licensed engineers in one or more states, and find that scientific journals are eager to publish articles written by officers of the Corps. As career officers gain more and more experience, the Corps assigns them to head larger and larger station public works departments, district or area offices, and public works centers. Throughout their varied careers, many are assigned to Navy Department offices and fleet commands as top engineering consultants and planners. Each year, several are assigned to work closely with the Atomic Energy Commission or other special agencies. While some are appointed to serve on international and joint staffs advising foreign representatives on naval shore construction. With the world as its province, and with the wide range of engineering work assigned to it. The Civil Engineer Corps offers a real challenge to every professional engineer eager to learn new fields and willing to adapt to new situations. In the CEC, an engineer's capabilities are his only limit. Therefore, the Civil Engineer Corps suggests to the future engineers of America who have the brains and the courage, make no little plans. Apply for a commission in the Civil Engineer Corps of the United States Navy.